Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. Nice to see you back or welcome, whichever the case may be. Yeah. Happy October. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, I almost forgot to come here in time today. I didn't know what I was thinking. I was thinking. sitting here waiting. Yeah. Enjoying I, my coffee. Well, I was enjoying my coffee and knitting a sock at home. <laughs> I just forgot I had to be here early. <laughs> Oops. It happens. Oh, well. Okay. So if somebody walks in, it's either A, the mailman, or B, Joanne will have to go sell some yarn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might run it past 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So. Okay. I have to show you this because you didn't even see this what since we ca since you walked in and we had to sit down. Okay. I practice stitch craft. Ah, Ta-da! That's cute. Isn't this adorable? Yeah. Okay, I'm in my Halloween mode. Yeah, that is cute. Yeah. Okay, this is the bizarre part. You know where I found this? Where? Seriously. Amazon. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They had a whole bunch of knitting themed t-shirts. Ah. And Okay, so this is how I got turned on to them. Um, at Leading Men, uh -huh. we were at the retreat in, earlier in September, and... Steve had on all these cute knitting themed t-shirts. Uh -huh. Being a guy, you know, yeah. t-shirts, that works well. Uh -huh. But I don't necessarily wear t-shirts because they're so uh, manly shaped, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't like the sleeve length. I don't like, you know, whatever. Yeah. They had them in a women's cut. Oh, okay. And so, I, I mean, the sleeve length is right. Mm -hmm. Love it. So yeah. I bought this one because uh -huh. it was perfect for this time of year. And they uh -huh. weren't expensive. I think, you know, it was like, what, 15 bucks for the t-shirt? Uh -huh. Which I didn't think was yeah. crazy bad, considering right. it's knitting themed. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not like it's got a wide market that you can sell tons of these buggers, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then I got another one. So you'll see the other one in a, in a couple weeks. Okay. I'm going to wear this one. This is the October one. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah. Very cute. <laughs> knitting Very theme, cute. Knitting yeah. themed t-shirts. <laughs> mm hmm Wow. Okay. So. So. Had to say it. Cool. All right. So what's new with you this week besides uh, new t-shirts? I am finally just getting my feet back to normal. Okay. Um, it was Ryder Cup in Wisconsin last week. Those of you um, who got to see it, wasn't it awesome? I had a blast. I spent so much time on that golf course. I did almost mm -hmm. no knitting. Okay. Um, and then my feet, oh my gosh, they were punishing me. Oh. They hurt so bad. I could, I, I mean, uh -huh. I get out of bed, out of bed in the morning, put that first step down. Oh, does that hurt? It was oh. terrible. Oh. Yeah, it was How bad. How many, what was the most steps you did? Cause you were. I large. had one day I was over 16,000. Okay. Which is, that's a lot for me. Yeah. Okay, I mean, my daily goal is like around seven, seven thousand five hundred. Oh. That's my daily goal. Yeah. Um. And and uh, yeah, sixteen thousand was just freaking nuts. Yeah. And and I did that. You know, it was sixteen one day, thirteen another day, um, and I did that starting on. Well, let's see. We worked in the in the in the merchandise tent helping a vendor on like Saturday and Sunday before the golf tournament. Mm -hmm. Then I was out there walk, working again on Tuesday, which was nuts. And then I helped, or then I was out at the, out there, you know, spectating Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. So Thursday yeah. I went out for practice rounds and Watch the opening ceremony. So of the week, Thursday was actually the uh, least amount of walking I did. Um, it mm -hmm. was absolutely awesome. I, I mean, the views of Lake Michigan were stunning. Um, mm -hmm. The crowd was amazing. You know, and, 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 and one thing I got to say, there was a whole bunch of social media posts about how awful the crowd was. And, oh. you know, like, like Sheboygan Scanner had like all these, you know, police calls because there was people behaving poorly. And oh. there was another, um, a British uh, tabloid that, you know, blasted the American fans because they were rude and disrespectful. Oh. This is a party golf event, okay? Uh -huh. It's not yeah. your stuffy weekly um, tour event, mm -hmm. okay? This does not happen every year. Right. And it is a celebration of golf. And um, 
So, yeah, it's more of a party. The crowds mm -hmm. are rowdy. I would say I did hear some disrespectful stuff, but then I put on my teacher evil eye. I turned around and I said, you can behave better than that. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. And then, mm -hmm. and it was it, the one time um, there were these two young guys. It, they were, you know, I want to say old teenagers, all yeah. right? And um, maybe barely 18. And they just, after I looked at them, and I said that to them, that was the guys that I said that to the first time. And um, they said, well, we didn't come in here to lose. And I looked at them, I said, losing has nothing to do with being respectful. Uh -huh. And well, and I said, now you can either clean up your act or I can call the PGA guy. Choose. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? And um, next thing I know, they turned around, they left. Okay. No yeah. wonder it was quiet. But yeah. I mean, I had no problem. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. uh, telling people, hey, that's rude. I mean, yeah. you got to almost feel sorry for the, the, the um, European team because let's face it, due to COVID, people couldn't travel. Oh, yeah. Usually right. your crowds are close to, I would say, 60, 40, mm -hmm. you know, under normal circumstances. The home course or the home right. country has 60% of the crowd and the yeah. rest is 40. But um, because of travel restrictions, it was mm -hmm. largely an, uh, an American crowd. And yeah. because of that, I think you have to expect a little one-sidedness. But right. yeah, it didn't have to be rude. <coughs> so I took it upon myself to mm -hmm. tell all the rude people to put it where it, you know, oh. to knock it off. Yeah. And so I had a blast the week. Good. And I, I, good. I am proud of having been a volunteer for the event. I mm -hmm. am proud just to have been involved in it. Um, gosh, and it would be so cool to do it again. Mm -hmm. So like Ron and I are now kind of talking, gee, should we travel for one? You know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, whether we do one in the United States or whether we actually go to Europe for one. There's one coming up. Now the next one is gonna be in Europe and it's 2023 and it will be near Rome, but it's like an hour out of Rome. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be in the United States and I can't remember where, um, in New York at Beth Page Black, I think. And then the next one uh, in Europe so this is like every, I don't know if it's two, three years between mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, the next one in Europe is actually in Limer Limerick, Ireland. Oh. No, okay, I have, Ireland's on my bucket list. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe that's the one we go to. Mm -hmm. You know, we can still travel for the ones in the United States if the old sure. guy ever decides to not work for a living. Yeah. You know, collect social security for a living sounds a whole lot better, but. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We had a blast. He Good. marshaled on whole 10, loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. I saw a whole bunch of celebrities um, because, mm -hmm. you know, they came out and um, walked the course with players. You know, it's funny, like Michael Jordan was there most of the weekend, actually, mm -hmm. and um, saw him walking on Sunday. And But, you know, the, the, the celebrity types get to walk inside the ropes with the players because then oh. they've got the security whereas the rest of us have to walk outside the ropes yeah. but whatever yeah. you know so it was it was an absolutely amazing weekend good, good. so yeah and here i am going on and on what did you do the last week <laughs> oh i didn't do a lot did i i uh i took my sock machine home i put that in my sewing room now and doing a little rearranging there i'm gonna those shelves over with the clearance stuff. I have a whole nother rack of those. Taking those home, I'm gonna put that in my sewing room. So rearranging a little there. Um, wow. I was sewing and knitting and English paper piecing. Just kind of a nice quiet week. Nothing exciting. And your hands all good? Yeah, yeah, I got my stitches out last Monday. It's a little flaky. Yeah, that's it's a normal. little swollen yet, so I'm supposed to keep pushing it down like this, and every hour go like this. So okay. Yeah. So oh, do you see my bracelet I'm wearing? I think we showed these last time. So we're wearing our bracelets. Yes. These are new ones for, since last time. This one's got that heart clasp. I like the magnet ones better. I love better. these magnet clasps. They're clasp. so much easier to put on. Yeah, I have actually a, a necklace that I wear. Uh, you know, one of my uh -huh. uh, from the old guy necklaces, and um, 
I ha I went into the jeweler and they put one of these magnet clasps on. Okay. And um, I, I, you know, I have to admit I was a little apprehensive because, um, let's see, I put it on one of my, you know, swanky diamond ones that he bought me, which mm -hmm. I, I wear rarely. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I love them, and and he buys them, so whatever. Um, I was a little nervous about putting that magnet, but I'm telling you, that thing has never come apart. I think you're okay unless you have little kids. If you got a baby you're hanging on to, I think they could grab it off. Yeah, probably. You know? But normal wear and tear, I think it would stay right on. And well, it's never open, so yeah, I yeah. think they're absolutely awesome. And, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it was funny because <laughs> you struggled to get that sucker clasped, and I was ready and waiting yeah, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. when we put these on for the podcast. So All the new kits that I've been doing, I've been putting magnets on. There were eight total with the heart. And, I mean, the hearts are cute. They're just a little fiddly. you got to pull the little bar through and then turn it. I mean, so it's not terrible, but it's a little fiddly. So, well, and they're fun to wear. Yeah, and most of them have the magnets. And there's two clasps in every kit, so you can make two bracelets in each kit. I was thinking you could even make a necklace. Just make it longer and wear a necklace. You know what? This reminds me, actually, I remember in the 60s and early 70s where we would wear the braided chokers. Oh, yeah. This would be so retro. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, do you call 60s and early 70s retro? Oh, yeah. Or, well, these days they call it vintage. Oh, vintage. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, I think We that's could be vintage. We yeah. are vintage. What the I was going to just say that. We are vintage, yes. So. Oh, well. Yeah. So I, I've been unpacking a lot of yarn, too, lately. Yeah, there's a whole basketball I, here. I've got a whole bunch in the vault. And uh, so, I mean, if we want to jump right into what we got new in the store. Let's do it. Here is the sweater. This is with the Dolce yarn, and the sweater is called Felice. So, let's put that inside. It's the button-down cardigan. Um, it's Fisherman's Rib, I think they said it is. Well, it is but ribbed something. Yeah, it is ribbed. I thought it was a broken rib, but maybe it's not. No, it doesn't look broken. Okay. But yeah, it is really pretty. And it's with this Dolce yarn. I have a whole bunch of colors up there, but... Um, we got gray. I just brought four of them back here. And then we have this purple, which is gorgeous. Yeah. And this one's like a denim and purple. And this is a green. And there's that color up there in a gold and a lighter gray. I think this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I it think it would beautiful. make a beautiful hat. Mm -hmm. um, I just, it, it, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And it's cotton, nylon, alpaca, and wool. A lot of fiber content. Yeah. But I just think it's beautiful. And you can see it if you look close. You can see little strands of the different stuff. And it, it's like it's all twisted together. It's, yeah. But it's really, really yeah. pretty. Yeah. Maybe I should that, take this home and do a hat with it. Yeah, that alpaca. Now makes it, it knits so up soft. Um, like a DK. No, a it says sport. it's it's worsted, worsted gauge. Wow. Because of the fuzziness, it's going to be lightweight in you know grams, but it it could hold a size. I think seven needle, it says. Let's yeah, see. yeah, US seven. size seven needle. Okay, so if you wanted it more dense, just go down your needle size, because that's yeah. also at a gauge of 19 stitches to the inch, which is pretty much a worsted gauge. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you are doing a hat with this, I would say double brim it. Yeah. Do a folded brim, and then you'd have a good hat or a tighter gauge. Yep. Wow, but it's really pretty. So, oh, I knit this this week. This is, did I show this yarn last no. week? Okay. This is Sakata. It is half wool, half cotton sock yarn from Plymouth. So I did a little ball so people could feel what it, what it uh, feels like. And I have all these colors. They're all like this kind of um, tweedy look, if you will. I think that's because it's cotton and wool. And, you know, the cotton don't take the... The dye oh, the same. The dye yeah. at all. So we got this like a lighter blue. 
Yeah. And then this is a black and a white. And we got gray, a different blue, a maroon. Is that navy? Isn't that black? That's black. Uh -uh. Or is it navy? No, you're right. It's navy. Sometimes yeah, I can't. Look it, yeah. See? Oh, yeah. I can't tell black from navy until you put them next to each other. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of great colors in this. Okay. There's green. This is the maroon. This one's the brown over here. Oh, that's brown. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we got lots of colors. Um, they all came in, which is amazing because lately I get so frustrated because not everything comes in. Well, it's that so, whole supply chain thing. Yeah. Right now the Lopi yarn came in yesterday. <gasps> But only two colors out of all the colors I ordered. So I'm not even putting it out until at least a couple more come in. The lady at Barocco, I called her yesterday to do a drop shipment thing. And she said they got a truck of Lopi in yesterday. She said it's not going to be warehoused until Monday or Tuesday. But it did come in. So there's hope it'll be here next week. Okay. Yeah, that's what we got new in the show. Oh, and tons of bags. That's what I've been doing. I've been sewing a lot of bags. I made uh, three medium drawstring bags and a whole bunch more of the quilted zipper bags. Cool. They're up front. I forgot to bring them back. You'll see them all at the website if you want to see them. One of them's scrappy. Maybe I, I like that scrappy them. one. Yeah, I should go get those. Why don't you show what you're, you're working on, and I'll go okay. get Okay, well, I did have an FO, and I wanted to show this. I've never done rainbow shawls. Never. I don't know why. Never have. But I did this one as a test knit. It's called Positive Thinking, and it just came out um, this week uh, from Lisa Ross on Ravelry. I know it was out. So you start down here, and it is asymmetrical. You've got these rainbow stripes, and that goes all the way to the blues. And then you start with the blues. Here's a little bit of the blue garter. You start with the blues, and you have this beautiful mosaic section. Okay, and then you end with the rainbow. So it is called Positive Thinking. Just came out this week, and... I, have to, I tested that one, and I have to say, it knit up quick because you're always wanting to get to the next color. It took 10 colors, and I had mini, uh, mini skeins that, like, two different sets of five, and I put them together, mm -hmm. and it worked out really nicely. Cool. So, positive thinking by yep. Lisa Ross. Gorgeous. And Lisa did hers with the rainbow and white. And that was gorgeous too. I and and hers sure. were like more of a like a, a brighter. Oh okay. Yeah, like bright pink and turquoise mm -hmm. and and purple. But mine mm -hmm. is more the traditional color, and hers are like uh, would be the brights. Okay. You know, if you think about that box of of Crayola markers, you got the traditional mm -hmm. red, blue, green, whatever, and then you have the brights. Yeah. Hers were in the brights. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Stunning. It is a gorgeous show. And it was Either not way. hard. Right. You know, and the mosaic section, you're knitting one color at a time and it slips stitches. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just slipping stitches and you oh and this looks like black. I should take it off here and bring up that mosaic. Um that's the, the mosaic pattern. Oh, is that navy? Yes, it's not black. It's See, navy. I told you I have a hard time seeing the difference. It's not black, it's navy. Okay. And I just love it with the navy. Oh, yeah. It, the black made it seem real cold. Mm hmm You know? Um, but the navy is beautiful. Because yeah. I put black next to the minis that day when I was uh -huh. picking out the yarn. I knit this in Cascade. This is Heritage Sock. Oh, Heritage. So, beautiful. I am very happy with it. It's wonderfully soft. Blocked lovely. No mm -hmm. complaints. So, I, yeah, this one will be in the shop for a bit. If you want to come in and see it, you can. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right, so let's show off some of these bags. Okay. This is that scrappy one I was telling you about. So I, I just did a, a whole bunch of scraps, and I put the duck in the middle. It says, I quack myself up. So, and the, all these bags, they have the little ends. They have a zipper pull. 
They're all fully lined, no exposed seams. This one's just a hit, like an inch shorter in the height than the normal ones. This one is, everyone calm down, I got this. And this one is be yourself unless you, being a unicorn becomes an option. And these are quilted, uh, see on the back. The fronts are quilted because they're quilted on the seams. And then the back is regular traditional quilting. And then I have several of these Wisconsin drawstring bags. And I did put a handle on them too. I don't usually do that with drawstring. I don't know, I just felt like it this week. So yeah, that's something I was sewing. I love Joanne's project bags. I have to say, uh -huh. I have several of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I collect project bags the way I yeah. collect yarn. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people like to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's some of the bags I was working on this week. You want to just keep going with what you've been working on this week? Well, I could not say no because I just finished this positive thinking test for Lisa. And then she said, I got a quick one because this shawl's coming out this month as well. And it calls for a half a skein of fingering weight yarn. So you figure 50 grams of six colors. And I thought to myself, hmm, I got plenty of that. Mm -hmm. Half skeins of yarn. So this is what I put together for my six colors. And um, so far what I've got is working out okay. Um, I have brown on the bottom. And then I have pink and green. This is a peachy color and mm -hmm. then gold and then a red and an ivory so this is going to be asymmetrical but it has this um central spine where you're doing your increases there mm -hmm. no it's a decrease duh this is a decrease here um and you have increases on both the front and the back on mm -hmm. on the ends so you increase on the ends every row, but you decrease in the middle on the right side rows. Um, but mm -hmm. once that pattern's in your head, then it's just a, uh, the rest of it is all um, charts. Or no, mm -hmm. actually not charts. This one is not charted. Most oh. of this is not charted. The, this is written out, the, the plaid was written out. Mm -hmm. This is a simple repeat, so that wasn't, and this is, these two were simple repeats. So. What will happen then is I will get to a point where I stop increasing. Oh, okay. On the wrong side. And so, and then the stitch count will stay the same. But what will happen is the central spine will shift over to the edge. Oh, okay. So it ends up being, the central spine will look like a, a check mark. A boomerang. Yeah. yeah. And it ends up being a boomerang shape. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's been fun. Okay. You can knit this with six half skeins. Uh huh. Um, or you can knit it scrappy. That okay. would be in a. What I'm doing is I'm just keeping track of all my colors that I use and how uh -huh. much. So when I get this done, my project page is going to um, show what each section used mm -hmm. because that way people who want to weigh their yarn and do it scrappy want to make sure they got enough. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing with this. And I have the Kylie Bamboo Sock Yarn in 50 grams. If anybody wants to buy 50 grams, they could Oh, you'd that. have six colors? Yeah. If they oh, just, cool. I don't have them. I got to list them better on the website. Only the more recent ones I have individual. Otherwise, I just have it under one big group. Okay. But I mean, if somebody says, you know, make me a color pack of six, I will definitely do that for you. Um... I have lots of the colors from the slipping tiles, which was the dusty pink and mauve kind of colors and grays. Oh, that would be pretty. Yeah. And so I could start there and add other ones on, but yeah, if you want them, just let me know and I can I can help pick them out. This pattern will be out by the end of October for sure. Okay. I know it cuz I yeah. It's not hard, looks complicated. Mm -hmm. I think you get more bang for your buck when it looks complicated and it's not. 
Okay. So I'll try to put some kits together then for yeah. the end of October for that. Yeah, so that's the what I'm working boom. on. I'm in a testing phase. Yeah, you've been testing a lot. And I, you know, <coughs> sometimes the people I test for will come up with a pattern and I'll say, oh, man, I got to do that. Yeah. Well, that happened yesterday. Now, I've been happily working on this, as soon, you know, ever since I finished that positive thinking. Um, and then this happened. I get this email um, from my other favorite designer, Stephanie Latvin. And she says, we need some Halloween fun. And so I'm going to show you a picture because pattern isn't out yet. It will also be out in the next, I would say, mid-October. Stephanie does not um, always wait till all the testers are done. For that matter, neither does Lisa, because positive thinking came out, and I know that there are testers. The deadline for that wasn't until mid-October. So they do that, but right, they right. want to just get some feedback on mostly yardage initially. Now, this mm -hmm. one, um, I can show you the picture. It is so Halloween funny. I, I just love, love, love this. So I saw it, and I thought, okay, I have to admit this thing. But I didn't have bright, fun, happy colors, so I went dark and moody. So these are leftovers, actually, from my Recalibrate. The black and the oh. gray are leftovers from my Recalibrate. And then these were minis that I had in stash. These, this green is a leftover from something. The pink is a leftover from a cowl I did uh, earlier this uh, summer. See, to me, it reminded me of your witch gnome. <laughs> that might be what I used this on. No, no, that, that green ball is in the box yet. Okay. It's something else I did that green on. I don't remember what. So this is the stripey part at the beginning of the cowl. Okay, and then you saw it here, folks my pumpkin okay and my ghost section is going to be purple oh okay with the white Where it i've has got the some black. white yeah yeah i'm using i've got some um cascade um heritage sock mm -hmm. um that i'm going to do in the white okay and then this is going to be the pumpkins and that okay. looks really good against the purple yeah yeah that purple will be a nice background for yeah. the ghost too yeah and then I'm going to use then the same green if I make it. If not, I'll change greens. Yeah. Um, for the uh, vines. And then this part here will be pink and black. Okay. And I love this pink. I love the pink next to the black. Mm hmm So I'm having a blast. Very I'm going to nice. knit this this weekend just because I'm having fun. Good, good. All right. So that's what I'm working on. Okay, I was working uh, on my curtains again. I showed you that picture a couple of times. I got, the, these are called flags on the pattern. So I got the little triangles on the bottoms of all these flags um, this week. Wow. These are the cool, this is the cool ones. So I got a lot of, I got eight, eight little triangles I sold this week. I am working on my recalibrate yet. I haven't, I didn't bring that in. I figured I'll bring that next time. Might be done by next time. I hope so, but it might not be. And then I brought, this time I brought the Stephen oh, West. Oh, my with word. The Connie. Um, I am doing a knit along with Dawn on this. She's way ahead of me. That's Dawn not shocked. from Frivolous and Frugal. She's trying to finish before the Stephen West mystery comes out October 8th, oh. whereas I'm not doing the mystery. But this is how far I am. This is beautiful. I love the way the Connie's playing out. Yeah, the, colors. the Connie's colors are working out perfect. You know, like this one I'm on, I started with the darkest purple along with the blue, and it's almost pink now. Oh, hey, the light came back light. on. Um, so, yeah. So it started out red, then it went orange, then brown, then purple, and now it's going to go pink. That's, that's this ball of Connie. I have two of each of these balls. And 
This is the other one. The other one doesn't change as much. It's a little bit variegated or gradient, but it, it doesn't change as much. But you can definitely see it in oh, here. Oh, sure. Yeah, like different. this part here. This part, it definitely is yeah, different. Yeah, look how light it is there yeah. compared to here. Yeah, it's real light here, dark here. Um, the back's not going to look horrible once they weave the ends in. Just a lot of floats, little tiny floats. So it'll be okay. Um, let me see if I have a pattern picture I can show you quick. And this is Stephen West Quadrangle Spires. And there's like 20 pages. Here it is. I'll just hold the pack. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So it is gorgeous. I think the Connie will keep playing out really well. Because, like I said, this one is going purple to pink. And then it'll repeat. It'll go red, orange, brown, purple, pink again. And then I'll start the next ball. Now, are you going to pay attention to starting the next ball where your colors line up? Um, yes, unless I get done with one side. Okay. So, and I won't be totally picky, but I'll kind of want it to be go a little bit. So I might wind a ball off. That's okay. Yeah. So we'll see how far it gets. I have two of each of these. They're 100 and, about 150 a ball. This, well, this one was 170, this one was 140. The other ones are probably just the opposite. Who knows? You never know with Connie. So, but they usually average about 150, 150 grams a ball. Mm. And it is working out more as a sport. You know, with 400 meters in 100 grams, I thought it would work up fingering. But I guess because of the spin, it's just a two-ply. So the spin makes it work up like a... Uh, there, we're back. There. You called it. Customer comes in. We'll have to stop for a minute. <laughs> oh, well. It's okay. Yep, yep. So she's all taken care of and out the door, so... All right. Uh, that is all I've been working on. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I'm still working on my my sweater, my green one with the the spec the, the the tweed. What's that called when you got all the little tweed? Tweed. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm working on that, but uh -huh. it's on the back burner. I'll finish it. Okay. My goal is to have that done by the end of October. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't have out my sweaters yet. I did pull out one and wore it on Thursday <coughs> and a pair of knit socks, my first time of the year, but I was a little warm. So I'm gonna leave my knits in the closet for two more weeks, I think. Okay, well, yeah, I haven't even put long pants on yet. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I, you know, I'm still wearing my shorts and uh -huh. I haven't switched my closet around. and. Yeah. So, yeah, no, not worrying about, it's beautiful today. Yeah. Again, you know, they said it was supposed to be rainy, <laughs> not raining. Yeah. Um, oh. It felt like it, though, this morning. When well, there was out. some weather going to come through, but I think it uh -huh. missed us. There oh. was a blob on the radar here and a blob on the radar here. And uh -huh. the way they were moving, you know, northeast, uh -huh. we were in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So they missed us going north and south. Okay. So. Cool. Maybe it'll be a good weekend after all. I don't yeah. know. I'm going to go home and. Decorate my house for fall. Mm -hmm. That's my plan. I'm sticking to it. Oh, I did succeed in last week's plan. I am parking in the garage again. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you got to get that done because you yeah. weren't parking outside in winter. No, no. I don't even like it in the fall because the leaves get stuck by your windshield wipers and that little yeah. ledge. I hate that. So I'm glad to be back in the garage again. And yeah, that works fine. There you go. Okay, well, okay. I think that's it, right? That's it. Oh boy, we had a long talk today. Yeah. Oh well. So, that's okay. okay. We'll see you next bye -bye. week, maybe. Bye bye.